Chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, are thought to be destroying the Earth's high-altitude ozone layer, the layer that protects us from the sun's ultraviolet rays. CFCs are commonly used in a lot of things today, including your automobile air conditioner. The Montreal Protocol, which is addressing the uh, ozone layer, depletion of the ozone layer, then requires us to reduce the use of CFCs uh, between now and the year 2000. The refrigerant currently used in your car air conditioner is CFC-12. Manufacturers are switching to HFC-134A, which poses no threat to the ozone layer. However, there are some obstacles that need to be overcome in order for 134A to achieve the same performance as the present refrigerant. The hardest problem that we're facing as far as converting to 134A is to find a new lubricant which lubricates primarily the compressor as well as the system is lubricated at the present time. 134A operates at higher pressures than R12. Therefore, the compressor will have to be enlarged. The condenser and the evaporator will also have to be bigger. And these hoses will have to be reevaluated to make sure they're compatible with the new refrigerant. As a result of the changes, uh, our full intention is, is that the outside of the vehicle will not change. Uh, there may be some small grill area opening size changes or there may be some depth changes on where the, uh, the various components are mounted but those are usually out of view of the outside of the car and we don't expect to have to change styling to accommodate it. However, on the so-called bottom breathers, vehicles with sealed fronts, changes may be more noticeable. We asked our MotorWeek artist to speculate on what this Chevy Beretta might look like with the larger equipment. The uh, ultimate goal of the manufacturer is to make the performance of 134 equivalent to what you've encountered in your car with the CFC-12 so that you will not know as a driver of the car that there's any change with the system. Once toxicity tests on 134A are completed in 1992, car manufacturers will begin to integrate it into their systems. Here in the States, Vermont has already banned the use of CFCs in auto air conditioners by the 1993 model year. Beginning January 1, 1995, Sweden will ban the use of CFC-12 in all products. Volvo plans to meet this by facing in the use of 134A completely by the end of calendar year 1994. The supply and demand of 134A has uh, moved up much more rapidly than originally anticipated and the car manufacturers now are targeting the early uh, 1990s for a phase-in of 134A. So there will be a possibility of a shortage of 134 from the chemical manufacturers in the very early stages uh, as it goes into production. 134A will also cost a lot more than its predecessor, but as of yet, no one is willing to say just how much more. The technology surrounding 134A is constantly changing. At a recent CFC conference in Washington, D.C., a company called Calsonic announced the development of a new condenser that's smaller and lighter and will eliminate the need to increase the size of other air conditioning components in systems using 134A. So the technology that's agreed upon today could very well be obsolete tomorrow.